I've been collecting about 20 years now and always collected like the Williams, uh, starting to get into the new Stearns now. And one of the struggles I had was, was the lighting. Um, commonly, a lot of the pinball machines uh, struggle with the GI illumination difficulty and seeing the play field, especially a lot of the older machines. Um, they've come a long way since then, the Stearns, they still benefit tremendously from the pin stadiums. Um, but long story short is about three or four years ago, I started adding uh, LEDs. I was one of those classic uh, pinballers that was a little bit hesitant about changing from incandescent bulbs and going into the LED world. Once I got into the LED world, and put them in the inserts and the GI lights, I noticed a tremendous improvement. Uh, I got a lot of my LEDs from Comet Pinball, which is a great company. I still use them, and they complement the Penn Stadium product very well. Uh, but one of the struggles was is that when you put the LED lights in into the inlays, into the GI lights, it does create a much better illumination in those areas, but you do also have times where you struggle with seeing the ball because there are areas that are called hot spots. So the inlays are very very bright, but then the play field still struggles with the illumination itself. So to try to round that out, I started working with just a set of LEDs, some strips, and just you know tried to put them around the play field. I put spotlights, and I ended up usually, usually using about seven or eight spotlights in the pinball machines. And that did rather well, except for the fact that where the where the spotlights weren't, there's usually a, a dark spot behind them. So then I found myself soldering and putting some more spotlights in other parts of the play field. And after I all said and done, I'd be in my twilight zone and have about seven or eight sets of spotlights and still not have full illumination of the play field, but it was a significantly better. However, one of the struggles was is that it would reflect off the off the DMD into my eye or off the back glass. And I'd have the spotlights lighting the play field, but they'd also be distracting me as a player. So taking a little bit of my, my skills and background with app development, um, previously to doing Penn Stadiums full time, I was an app developer and also a website developer. And I consulted dentists, orthodontists, plastic surgeons, whole different industry than pinball on how to build patients through mobile marketing platforms. But my passion was always with pinball. So I had integrated the pin stadiums, which really weren't a, a product at the time. I had integrated the, the lights that I was working with and integrated them with the app so that you could control them through a Wi-Fi signal onto your phone. And uh, about, I'd say about two years ago, Cincinnati Group came over. And Trent Augustine, some of you guys probably know him. He's from Tilt Amusements. A uh, very good, reputable dealer that I get a lot of my machines from. Um, he deals with the Stern pinballs. He came over to my house and he saw my collection and he had noticed some very early stage versions of the pin stadiums. Uh, they didn't have a name at the time, but he said, I've never seen a play field so well lit. He's like, what are you doing? And I, I explained to him what I had done is I had created a magnetic mounting system for these LED lights that I had created and they mount on the inside edge just below the glass line of the machine. And they generate their own Wi-Fi signal and my phone can connect with it. And he's like, wow, that's really cool. He's like, I've never, you know, Trent's actually like, I think number seven in the world. Uh, he's commonly in the top 10, which is remarkable to, you know, even be in the top 100 at that point. But he was like, I'm really impressed with these. He's like, I can actually see the ball. It, it, uh, it seems like it would definitely help uh, my playing skills. And he's like, well, I think maybe you should uh, consider trying to sell these. And I'm like, I had no plans to even sell them. I was like, they're still in early, very prototype stages. And he said, well, let's go to uh, Expo, or not Expo, I should say, uh, the Pinball Ohio show last March. And so I had to come up with a name with them for him, and I thought about, well, when you're inside a play field, and if you were down on the play field looking up, where's the best place to put these lights? It would be up top, so that the magnetic, magnetic mounting system made it so where you could mount them there. So hence, like, if you go into a baseball stadium or a football stadium, all the lights are always at the top. You never see lights down at the bottom, and so the word Penn Stadium and the, the business Penn Stadium was formed based upon that concept, 
So if you look at a pinball play field, even the newest or the oldest play fields, the GI lighting is currently either flush or about a quarter inch above the play field, and it's really difficult to get any kind of illumination past that point. You could probably get about two or three inches maybe with some of the, the slingshot uh, GI lights, but that's about the extent of it. So anyways, long story short is I went up to Expo and Trent had one of the first Aerosmith LEs that were out in the wild. And he's like, can you put these lights in there and take up the show? And I was a little hesitant because I knew they weren't finely tuned by any means. They were still a homebrew version. And I went up there, got a great response. I ended up just saying I was going to do a pre-order of 100 of them. And the business just took off. So fast forward. Now, pin stadiums all across the world. Uh, we've got about 2,000 uh, lights have been sold in the last year, and it, they work just simply because they work in every pinball machine. They're not specific to one game. So you get one set of pin stadiums, and it will work in any machine from the 1930s all the way up to Iron Maiden and Deadpool and everything going forward. Um, so what I want to do, first of all, is address what they are what the balance, what the features are of it, but in addition to that, to show collectors and also operators, which collectors are a majority of the Penn Stadium business, simply for the fact that they create a great visible play field, um, more enjoyment. The, there's a UV glow flasher that really adds a lot of dazzle to the play to the playability of the game, and a lot of people appreciate that. That's Probably out of 100 kits I sell, 98 of them always have the UV glow flasher. So that's been really, really, uh, really neat to see that take off to that portion of the lighting system. Um, but so aside from the, the collectors getting more enjoyability out of their game and visibility of the play field, there's also operators that have been getting on board. And interesting story that happened about six months ago, you guys might be familiar with uh, Logan's Arcade. Uh, they're very, very well-known, very respectable um, bar in, in Chicago. And I got an order from a gentleman with the last name of Zespi. I had no idea who he was. And he had placed an order for uh, Penn Stadium for roller games. And that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody place an order for roller games. Usually it's, you know, like a scared stiff or it's a WPC game or maybe like a newer Stern. Um, so I sent his order out, and about a month later, I get a call back or an email back from him, and he's like, I wanted to tell you that I really love your lights, and I am, I'm an operator, and I actually own Logan's Arcade, and I'm like, wow, I didn't, I had no idea, like, who he was. I knew who Logan's was, but I just knew he was just, a, I, th I thought he was just a regular customer. He said, I, I ran a revenue report last month, and I have some inter interesting results to give to you. Uh, I said, well, what was it? And he said, well, every month, uh, myself and four other uh, operators get together, and we run a revenue reports, and we share ideas. And he said, the thing that got me was that I did love the results with the Penn Stadiums, but I loved even better the return of my investment that I got last month. And I said, well, what was that? And he said, it went up 30%. And he said, you, don't, you may not know my industry, and you may know roller games, but of all things, roller games is a difficult game to increase revenue on, let alone trying to increase 30% on any game, whether it's a new game. And he said it was the only game that did that. And he's like, I know it's because your lights, because it was visible, it drew attention, and people were able to play and enjoy it better. So he ended up just filling up the whole arcade. I went up there and personally delivered an order to him, got up there, helped him install the lights. I was... I was excited about just having somebody that reputable to support the product. And he had told me that he found out about it from the developer, um, or I should say the designer of uh, Deadpool, who did the software. And it's Tanya Kleiss, and he's a, he was a Stern employee, and he still is. And I didn't know, I'd known of him, and I know he's been involved with several other games. But he said that he was the one that recommended them. He said, you need to check out these pin stadiums. And uh, so it was sort of a neat story to have somebody like Tanya, who's making these superb games and working with Stern to also back up and support it. Uh, but so the install time with these is what I want to get to is I'm going to show, I'm going to have Zach and Greg uh, do an install of these to show everybody how easy they are. And uh, that normally about your first, your first install is going to take about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, Zach's probably laughing because he can do it in five. And uh, I'm sure Greg can probably smoke him on that too. <laughs> 
But the, um, to give you a, a little more information on the, on the stadiums, uh, let, me get, let, me, let me get some of the features up here on the uh, screen. Give me just a moment. You got okay. So one of the interesting thing is things about the Penn Stadiums is since they do generate their own Wi-Fi signal, you can connect to them with your phone, and there's an app that controls them. So you can turn them off and on and control them remotely, but you can also adjust the colors. And uh, this machine in particular, a lot of people have ordered for Scared Stiff. Uh, it's the WPC. Williams games uh, that do struggle a lot with the lighting. And the multicolor aspect of it on the, on the app itself, you can, there's a color wheel that comes up. And when you connect to them, you, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the home lighting, like the Hue lighting systems, to give you just an example for your home reference. You can use this color wheel and dial in the exact colors to the, for the Penn Stadium lights. And you can run patterns, you can run all kinds of uh, you can, even, you can even take a picture of the play field. So let's say you want to bring the artwork alive, but you want to match it specifically to a certain color of the inlay on the insert or in the artwork. There, you, you hit the camera feature on the app, and you go up to the play field, and you'll take a picture of, let's say, a blue spot. Instantly, the Penn Stadium lights will turn that exact color to the play field. Um, so anyways, I mean, that's, that's sort of a, a bells and whistles. Some people really like that feature. I tend to usually use the color wheel to dial it in. And the way they install is they don't trigger from, or they don't, they don't get, gain power from the PCB board. Um, the early versions of the Penn Stadiums, you would plug into the PC board in the back, PCB board in the back, and you would tap, it would tap 12 volts. It was plug and play. But some of these machines already have a lot of mods on them, and the older machines can sometimes only handle so much. So now the new versions, uh, Zach and Greg will show you, they install into the service port. The, the power is tapped from the service port. Simply plug it in. That's also what makes it universal with any, any um, pinball machine is as long as you've got a service port, you can install the pin stadiums. And there isn't any kind of splicing or dicing of the wires. There's a GI cable, a GI flasher cable. Greg's got down there at the bottom. Um, those have alligator clips on the end that plug into the GI module, which is on the end of the pin stadiums. And then you just take the alligator clips and you will clip onto the back of a GI. Um, it doesn't matter if it's the positive or negative. As long as you get it on there, the GI module I designed is smart enough to switch the polarity. So anybody can install them. If you're an operator and you got somebody on the field, it's not a lot of specific directions or anything you can really do to mess them up. Uh, you just you just hook them up and get a good grab on the back of a, of a GI, and the portion, that portion of the lights will turn on. And then there's also the other set of clips uh, that they'll install too, the uh, red alligator clips. That connects to the UV Plus Glow. The UV Plus Glow is a second, second set of lights that is embedded on the light bar up top, and that's what you connect to a flasher. That's the part that gives you the wow, the dazzle. Um, it's, it simulates UV light, so it's not real UV light. Uh, UV light technically would be damaging, and it, you know some people are concerned about damage in the play field. Also, it's not very bright. <laughs> yeah, initially that was some of the questions, uh, but but you, this UV is, is simulated so that you get the same effect, you get the same kind of uh, uh, the the UV reactive glow effect on these on these play fields as you would, but you get as you would with like a UV light, but you get the brightness factor of it. So. Here we're going to look to see, to find a GI bulb. Commonly underneath the slingshots is a, usually a very accessible area. Um, you got them on the side there? Yep. Yep, that looks good. So half of the lights are already connected. Um, and then the flashers, you can choose any one. That's the fun part, though. Yeah, exactly. You can pick a flasher and see how it goes, and then yep. pick another one. And 
Yeah, you can just go to any anyone you want. I usually recommend trying to find one that doesn't go off too much so that because of the the impact of the Penn Stadiums or the UV, you want it to be something that's special. Um, you know, like you can put it in the pop bumpers and it hits every time and that's neat. A lot of people do that. However, I think it's it's better when something's like a later mode in the game or maybe uh, the completion of a game or, or nail or not completion of the game but completion of a mode or some ramp shots. I like them on spinners. Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, Zach had installed the first set on, on or actually second, because I had them on mine, but the first set publicly on a Tron. And one of, the, one of the things a lot of the potential customers were saying is that, I don't know, you, you know, you don't know if you really need them. It's a newer game. And so they had done a video. They were the first ones that did a video on, well, actually, you did Shadow and you did Tron, didn't you? Shadow was amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah Shadow was... Uh, a night and day difference. It, a lot of people, I mean, you can s simulate the name Shadow with how dark that play field was. And he picked a great one. Um, I had not personally installed him on the machine, and then he did a review of them. And I think that's one of your top top 10 uh, video views. Uh, a lot of people go to that to check it out. So definitely go to SDTM's uh, YouTube channel and look at the uh, Penn Stadium install. It was about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, so he's got the connection of the flasher and the GI on there. And now what they'll do is they are going to use the um, rubbing alcohol packet to rub, clean the area in the back because there's going to be some ribbon cable clamps that will guide that ribbon cable. So it's a very clean lift when you, inst when you open up the play field. Um, the magnetic design, the reason that the magnet mounts are on here is because when you raise the play field, you need to remove the lights. And they simply remove within a second or two. Um, so you just rest them in the play field, or you can crisscross them in the back of the uh, of the back box for easy maintenance. Um, we all know that we have to dig into our pinball machines, maybe more than that we would like. But the ribbon cables will will guide it in the back so that you don't you don't have it flailing around there. But the uh, what did you have on your Tron? Did you have the 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 uh, what is that? The kit, the tube, the tubes that go on there that do the LE. Did you have that? That, that yeah, have absolutely. The, yeah. I'm worried that it was going to drown out the uh, EL wire. Yep. Yeah. So that that's been some of the some of the initial concerns to people that haven't installed the lights. They've been they've been wondering, hey, is it going to drown out my my inserts? Is it going to drown out some of my mods? Is it going to um, affect any of those? And it won't. I mean, it's it would take maybe a blast of sunlight to, you know, drown out an inlay bulb. I mean, because you can't take away the power of that source that it displays to you. And with the adjustability of the lights also, some people don't like them bright. Some people want them dimmer. You can adjust on the color wheel. You can adjust the brightness of the lights from 0 to 100%. So there's a lot of flex flexibility with that. And that's what you always hear about, you know, everybody's like, oh, pin saves are too bright. I can't, I can't stand that. It's too bright. It's the worst explanation. Yeah, I, I, I don't yeah. Yeah. No, you're fine. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here just turning off my lock screen so people can actually see the product and see, see the layout of it. Um, so here you've got the, an iPhone or Android. Uh, it's a free app that you download on Android or iPhone platform. This is the a color wheel that you'll see that comes up once you connect with them. You can even organize your machines. So if you've got multiple pin stadiums, which a lot of people do, they will organize the machines. They can. They, it'll come up with a list that shows Iron Maiden, Deadpool. Um, you've got Scared Stiff on there, and then you tap on each one of those, and then you can adjust the lights for those. You can do it remotely too. Uh, technically, the way I designed it is I've I've had customers going through an install. They've hooked up the 
the flashers and the GI backwards, which is common. I've even done that sometimes in a hurry, just trying to get things installed, and I tell them, don't worry about it. But a, the interesting story was one guy called me, and he's like, look, my lights are not working. They're absolutely not working. But what if you hook up the GI and the flashers backwards, uh, the flasher is so powerful that it overpowers the GI, and it looks like it's off. So he said, I create a Penn Stadium account. I can log in, and I control it on the app, but nothing's happening. So he gave me his login, and so he was in Texas, and I was in Cincinnati. I was able to control his lights remotely, and he was just like blown away by it. I'm like, turn it to blue, turn it to green. He's looking at it. I'm like, look really close, and do you see anything? He's like, it looks like it's changing color. I'm like, okay, you, you've got him hooked up backwards. So it's probably overkill to say that we'll ever change your lights on the other side of the world but you do have a lot of accessibility with them. Or if you're an operator or something, you know, you can adjust them remotely. Somebody's saying, hey, we got one that's too bright, turn up and down remotely. It's very convenient that way. But you just add them to your home Wi-Fi network. Um, you, you just open up the app. You don't have to connect to them directly after that. So, but then there's the, uh, the RGB controls. So the lights here have RGB lights and white lights. I chose warm whites because I find that warm whites do very well with play fields. Uh, they usually bring the artwork up. It's not stark. Um, you, you really get a lot of uh, vibrancy and true colors out of that richness. So with the full spectrum white GI uh, and then the, the colored lights, the uh, RGB lights, you adjust those separately. So what I find is that when you get your kit installed, I usually turn the white lights down completely. I will adjust the colored lights. So you'll get like this red, blue, or yellow, or green glow. But what happens is when you look at the play field, you can start to see certain aspects of it come alive. And that means it's going to highlight the artwork really well. And then what you'll do is and you'll go in the app and you'll adjust just the white lights themselves. And that's what gives you the illumination. So the RGB lights will give you the color casting. And then the white lights will give you the illumination of the play field. And you can change them. I mean, you can make them to where it's like really blue. Some people like that. I mean, I, I try to retain the original artwork and, and make it respectable to the artist. But then some people like the color changing um, patterns that they can create. And you can do custom patterns with it, too. And the pin stadiums, are, are, they look stealth. So when you're playing the game, they look like a factory option. You, as you can see over here, I mean, a lot of people don't even know when they when they are playing the light or playing at the booth, and they've never heard of Penn Stadium. They're like, "Well, what's going on?" We don't really know, other than the fact that our game doesn't look like this. But it's it's a matte black finish. Um, these have the Invisa shields on them, which is an additional feature that customers had requested. That from the sides you could see the lights standing, not playing. But so this right here is an additional awning system that just mounts on the top of them. You recently installed some of those Invisa shields on your on well, yours. That, that, that's what that was my only complaint about the product when Scott had done it was that I, I didn't like being able to see the bulbs from the side. I didn't like to be able to, to see the actual mounted or keep the shoes down. Um, and I had oh, the first set to yeah. the Invisa shield and it illuminated the whole time. Literally so come into my no, you don't have to add to the light, but you can just connect to it directly. It made, it made a huge difference. The only the only complaint that I had about just them, you can just connect just connect to it directly. There's two of them. So we're. Those are yours. Okay. Did you? Are you on the Wi-Fi? No. Okay. Let's go to the Wi-Fi on your phone. So what he's going to do is he's going to go to settings and then to Wi-Fi. He's going to look for the the Wi-Fi that it generates. Settings and then Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 Let me let me get mine. Here. Let me hand this to you. Hey guys. Let's hope I had these things hooked up right. Did you plug in the service port power now? I did. You did? Okay. I just don't like hooking things up on other people's machines. Yeah. What it sounds like when Greg turns on all of his machines. Yeah, it, no, it, it actually, it's almost like an L channel. It comes, it, it mounts on the top of your light strip, comes out and does an L down. So it just blocks, Scott, it, I mean, it's, yes, yeah, yeah. So like if you, you know, before, if you were standing at a machine next to it or two machines down, 
you catch all that visible light out of the side yeah. of your eye, the bulbs right. themselves, and that eliminates that, but it doesn't interfere with any of the, the lighting of the play field itself. Yeah. Can you hold that up for me just a sec? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. We don't know if the trimmer's port is. It's always just a fuse in it. It's up to Joe. Yeah, but I don't know if there's a trim. But hey, it does a sign. Yeah, that's it. Is that your right there? Oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah, we can just get an extension cord and run it straight to the wall. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering, sometimes there's a bad uh, GI socket. Oh, uh, okay. So sometimes that can be. Yeah, there we go. It's just a bad, s uh, yes, you can. You could until you add it to the Wi-Fi and then it secures itself. <laughs> so we just had a bad socket on the game. Um, just of course Robert, I picked the wrong one. Robert, we'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah, at least for Zach. Sorry. <laughs> we told you when it comes to technology, uh, anything can go wrong will go wrong with uh, straight down the middle. That's right. That's so you weren't wearing your headache. Right? The People really wouldn't want to see that. Oh, uh, I put the balls back in. Gun, 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 gun. Go ahead and lay the play field back down. Good eye to see. There we go. Oops. All right, here, go back. Come on, Zach. I think there's something with the, the GI on here. Like, something no, it's looks, just yeah, dirty. it looks a little crusty, but that's not related. But anyways, we've got to wrap up because it's an old ballot. They've got another stuff. one coming. Um, I think it's just a, a bulb that was the GI connection here on the machine. But Zach and Greg can attest to it. If you guys really, if you want, we, you want to see the Penn Stadiums in action, we've got 17 games at the booth. All of them installed, um, all fully working, and uh, we've got a lot of range of uh, different different machines. So anything from the old era to the new ones. Um, but that's pretty much about it. Um, sorry that that didn't go well. I wasn't familiar with that machine, but I think it's just a matter of the GI sockets uh, on that. We have to probably work on a little bit. But anyways, I appreciate you guys all coming and checking out the uh, seminar. And uh, thank you, Zach and Greg, and uh, for doing that. Very thankful for you guys. You guys have been great, great for the product and uh, for our industry too. Thank you.